Hi everyone, welcome back to another Q card discussion. I'm Richard Caroline and today I'm here with Grace Oshin. So uh, we are uh, going to look into a case that is a, ho a hospital ward case, right? Yes. And the patient has been posted for a surgery that is arthroplasty and mm -hmm. the nurse is visiting the patient to prepare the patient for the surgery. But when the uh, nurse is there, the patient has a lot of questions about what exactly is the procedure because the patient doesn't know anything about the procedure and this yes. is the first time he is undergoing a surgery too. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes, let's look into it uh, I'll play the part of the nurse and uh, Grace will be handling the part of the patient okay and you should be very careful because these are the this is a common type of question uh, which yes. appears nowadays mm -hmm. in your exam pre-operative instructions yes. post-operative care these are kind of like common questions that you can expect so this is kind of like a model that you can use as a reference yes so I hope this is going to be effectively useful for you guys so without wasting much time let's start yes okay yes So your time starts now. Good morning, Mr. Paul. Good morning. My name is Richa. I'm one of the registered nurses working in this hospital ward. And I'm here as advised by the doctor to prepare you for the surgery. Oh. How are you feeling today? I'm not well. I'm really upset about the proposed surgery. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Could you please tell me more details about what is worrying you? Because I have never undergone a surgery and I'm quite upset about mm -hmm. uh, the things uh, that is going to happen on me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Paul, it is not unusual to feel this way. I understand this is your first time, so you might have a lot of questions that is worrying you, but I'm here to explain everything in detail for you, okay? Thank you. So if at all you have any questions that is bothering you about the procedure mm -hmm. or what are the things that you need to know about this particular surgery, you can raise it and I'll answer all those questions, Thank okay? Thank you so much. So to begin with, do you know anything about this particular surgery or what is the requirement of it? I know that I have some kind of serious injury mm -hmm. and that's why doctor sent me to undergo the surgery to repair it. That's right. So uh, from your report, it is mentioned that you you met with an accident you had a fall while you were you're practicing you're a skater right yes so it is mentioned that you uh, you severely damaged your shoulder your mm -hmm. shoulder joint while you were practicing mm -hmm. so that is the reason why the doctor advised an immediate shoulder replacement to repair the damaged shoulder joint okay. mm -hmm. so that is the reason why we have to perform this surgery for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in this procedure what we're going to do is we will remove the portions of the shoulder joint which is damaged mm -hmm. and and uh, then we will replace it with artificial implants. Mm? Okay. So that is what we're going to do in this procedure. I hope that's clear for you. Yes, mm? I understand that. Do you have any other thing to can ask me? Can you please tell me about the recovery period that I can expect? Absolutely. I'll definitely explain that to you. Uh, so normally, uh, you can resume to your work or other activities mm -hmm. with after two to three weeks of your surgery. Mm -hmm. But the only thing you have to keep in mind is that with limited hand movements, okay? Okay. Because we, uh, as I mentioned, we'll be removing the damaged uh, shoulder joint and mm -hmm. then we have in you know we'll install the artificial implants right mm -hmm. so it will take some time for it to be settled so you have to make sure that your hand movements are completely limited mm? okay and uh, it will take at least uh, six months for you to return to full activity too oh, mm? I see please don't get worried about the time frame mm? Mm -hmm. you can do other activities too as I mentioned it's not like you have to be completely uh, movementless okay you can do your things but make sure that you're extra cautious about it mm? okay and because in initial days there will be a little bit of pain too but don't worry about it we will provide you with the medications and everything to help you okay right. so you do not have to worry okay, yes. because this is a well reputed hospital and we have done many cases like this and uh, the surgeries most of the cases have been uneventful too so you don't have to worry anything about it okay okay so um, one thing I need to tell you is that you need to discontinue skating for some time until the doctor's order because oh. uh, you met with this accident while you were skating, right? So if yes. you do that again, it might uh, lead to another fall, okay? I'm not saying that you will definitely fall, but there is a chance because you already have one hand which is not well. So your body balance might not be proportional right now and it might lead to another fall. And okay. at this moment, we cannot take that chance, okay? All so right. please make sure that you avoid skating. Okay. So will you be able to do that yes that's a bad news even then I can do that well I know it is a bad news for you but please make sure that you'd follow that okay yes so uh, do you have any other concerns yes what about my flexibility after the surgery well that's a very reasonable query from your side mr. Paul so uh, you need to do regular exercises mm -hmm. which will help to restore the flexibility of your hand okay, okay? it is very important mm -hmm. and in order to help you with that we will make arrangements with the physiotherapist okay so make sure that okay uh, you follow all the instructions told 
available to you by the physiotherapist. Okay. okay I hope you will be able to do that. Mm? Yes, I can. Uh, so before I leave, I need to adv give you some advice about uh, some of some aftercare methods. Okay, so shall I explain that to you? Yes, I would like to hear that. So um, after the surgery, we will be uh, providing you with a sling or an immobilizer. So mm -hmm. make sure that you don't remove it okay. early. Yeah, mm -hmm. please. Uh, some some patients they go home and if they feel a little better, they kind of like take it off. Mm -hmm. They think that they have been completely recovered, but please don't take the chance. Okay. okay. Please wait for our order. Uh, like okay. uh, you can come for the review, and if the doctor is saying yes, you can remove it now. Then you can take it off. Okay. okay. Unless and until, please don't do that. All okay? right. And as I mentioned, physiotherapist is, is very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. So please don't skip any sessions of that okay. and for the time being please refrain yourself from pushing lifting or straining the surgical hand mm -hmm. okay because it might lead to dislocation or mm -hmm. anything like that so please try to avoid all those things okay. and if you have the habit of driving or if you drive please don't drive for some time too okay mm -hmm. and all these uh, restrictions on you are can are temporary i'm not saying you cannot do it for your lifetime mm -hmm. These are all temporary. You can come back for the review next time. Okay, okay. after the surgery, mm -hmm. will be discharged, and then you will come back for the review. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the doctor will give you more information about what are the things that you can start doing and what you need to control as well. Okay. Okay. So I hope I have clarified all your concerns. So these yes. are everything that you need to know about the procedure and the aftercare. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to ask me? No, nothing more. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, shall I prepare you for the surgery? Yes, sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. So that's the end of our role play. Hope it is clear for you guys. Yes, and it was a very informative role play as well as I hope you all got the idea how to reassure a patient mm -hmm. who have certain concerns regarding the surgery. Absolutely. Especially as we said already, these are the common set of Questions. role play questions. Mm -hmm. So please make sure that you uh, understand it clear, clearly mm -hmm. and you know how to um, do it, do it. later. Yes. So another thing I need to tell here is that most cases when the uh, nurse is visiting the patient for a pre-operative instructions or uh, to prepare the patient for a surgery, like in this case, uh, students make a mistake when it comes to the conclusion. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, they have to relate to the context because we have visited the patient to prepare the patient. So while we, were, we are there, the patient asked you a lot of questions. So we actually answered the questions and then you have to do the purpose, that is prepare yes. the patient. So while you're concluding the role play, you have to tell that. So now shall I prepare, prepare you for the, for the surgery? Because that is why we went there. That is the sole purpose of it. But some students kind of like they get carried over and uh, they forget it. Mm? Yes. And so they will say, uh, yeah. hope you will get uh, recover fast yeah, and they'll see you later. Yeah, they normally say like that. So thank you so much for your time see you for the next time something like that but yes. that is not the context so whenever you are concluding you have to make sure that you're relating to the context that is only time the entire conversation will be complete yes. so uh, after this role play there will be the feedback session where you'll get more explanation about how you can create statements in an easy way so do watch it and also post your valuable feedback about how you found this role play too so we'll definitely look into it yes. so we'll come back another time until then take care bye bye, bye. Hi everyone, welcome back to another feedback session. My name is Richard Gadline. So today we are going to look into a feedback session of the cue card uh, that is arthroplasty and we just saw the video right now. And as you guys have seen, the setting is a hospital ward and we are talking to a 25 year old skater, right? And there are certain things that we have to explain to this particular patient and emotionally support the patient too. So I'm going to take you through each task one by one and show you how easily you can create statements here. Okay, so let's get started. So so as you guys can see, this is the cue card. We have uh, the setting hospital ward and the background information is also given there. So the background information, we can I'll see the details like the age of the patient, then what the patient is doing uh, and what happened to the patient as well, okay? And it is also mentioned why we are meeting the patient. We are meeting the patient to prepare him for the surgery. So from this particular information, we can get to know what are the basic uh, things that you have to discuss in this particular role play. So we got all those information and you can see the tasks here as well. So I will be taking you through each task one by one and we are going to have a task analysis as you guys can see in this particular screen. So let's begin. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we are going to do is to understand the setting. So the setting is a hospital ward as we can see here. And since it is a known case, what you have to do is you have to ask the name of the patient during three minutes preparation time. Okay. Once you have done that, the next thing you have to do is move on to the background information and task number one. And then you have to frame the opening statement of the conversation using that information that you got from the background details, okay? 
So now let's look here. From the background information, we get to know that the patient is in the ward and we are visiting this patient to prepare the patient for a surgery, okay? The patient has been advised by the doctor to undergo a shoulder replacement surgery. So we are there to prepare the patient. So this is our first task, greet the patient and check how he or she has been feeling lately, okay? So now if you check the comment section here, greet the patient. I have divided the task into similar parts so that it will be easier for you to understand, okay? So here, the greet the patient segment, you can see it here. And this is the greeting. Good morning, Mr. Mike. That is the greeting that we are giving here, okay? And then we are introducing our name. My name is Richard. I'm one of the registered nurses on duty today. And then we are stating the reason why we are there. I'm here as advised by a doctor to prepare you for the scheduled surgery. Okay, so that is how we are going to open this particular role play conversation. Mm -hmm. Then, we haven't finished task number one completely. We have only done greet the patient, okay? Now we have to do, check how she or he has been feeling lately. So, this is that particular segment. You can simply ask a question, how are you feeling today? That's enough because we're just checking with the patient how the patient has been feeling recently or lately. So you can just ask the question, how are you feeling today? Or you can ask, how have you been feeling recently? Something like that, okay? So this is how you have to do task number one. Now let's move on to task number two. So this is task number two, and as you guys can see, there are a lot of explanations that I have maintained here. I'll take you through that one by one. So this is task number three. Let's read it together. Emphasize the importance of the surgery to repair the damaged shoulder joint. Explain the procedure, removal of portions of the shoulder joint, which is damaged and replaced with artificial implants. Okay, so here we are going to explain the importance or why this shoulder replacement surgery was, you know, scheduled for the patient and also we are going to explain the procedure to the patient. Okay, so let's look at this comment here. Acknowledge the concern of the patient before proceeding into task explanation, okay? So in task number two, you can see that we are going to start by explaining the importance of the surgery. So even before you do that, you have to address the concern of the patient there, okay? So you can use a statement like, I understand that the whole idea of surgery is intimidating for you, okay? And then we are going to explain the importance of the surgery, which is this point. However, it is important to understand why surgery is inevitable. Mr. Mike, unfortunately, the fall damaged your shoulder joint. It is a situation that requires urgent attention. Therefore, a shoulder replacement surgery to repair the damaged shoulder joint is necessary. See, that is what we are explaining there. So if you asked me which particular part of task number two was explained there, then I'll say this is the portion. Emphasize the importance of the surgery to repair the damaged shoulder joint. This particular portion has been explained from this. However, it is important till this part. Okay, so you can clearly see what are the points we have mentioned here. We have said the surgery is inevitable and then we have explained to the patient that during the fall, the patient damaged the shoulder joint. So it requires urgent attention. Therefore, a shoulder replacement surgery is really important to repair the damaged shoulder joint. Okay, so that is the explanation that we are going to give for the task number two first part that is emphasize the importance of the surgery. Okay. Then we have to check the understanding of the patient, okay, because you just gave an explanation to the patient right now why it is important. So it is also important that you check with the patient whether the patient followed your explanation, okay, whether the patient understood the significance of the surgery. Hmm? So you can frame a question like, I hope you understand the significance of the surgery. Okay, so that's a brilliant point that you can use there. So the patient is saying, yes, I do understand it, but I don't know anything about this procedure. So what are you going to do in that procedure? Okay, so we are going to explain the next point in task number two, that is explain the procedure, removal of portions of the shoulder joint, which is damaged and replaced with artificial implants. So that is the point that we are going to elaborate. And you can see that here. Mr. Mike, there is nothing to be alarmed about the surgery. 
I'll explain what will be done during the procedure. During the procedure, the damaged portions of the shoulder joint will be removed and replaced with artificial implants. This surgical reconstruction will help to restore the function of the joint. And again, we are checking the understanding of the patient and then we are also leading the patient to the next task by asking a simple question. I believe you are clear with the entire procedure or do you have any other concerns? See how beautiful it is done? That is how you can move to the next task. Also, by explaining the task, you can also progress to the next particular task too. So, this is a basic explanation of task number two and I hope it is clear for you guys. Hmm? So you can see all the points being explained here. At first, we are telling Mr. Mai there is nothing to be alarmed about the surgery, okay? And then we are telling Mr. Mai that we will explain what is going to happen during the procedure. And we are telling the patient how the damaged portions of the shoulder will be removed and how it will be replaced with artificial implants. Mm? Then we are giving one more point. The surgical reconstruction will help to restore the function of the joint, which is an additional point that I've added here. You can also do that because that is a normal understanding of this entire situation. So you can also add that point. Mm? And just keep in mind after you give such an explanation, it is important that you check the understanding of the patient by asking a question like this. I believe you are clear and about the entire procedure or do you have any other concerns okay so the mis mr mike will ask you any concerns if at all he has any or you can move on to the next task okay so that is how task number two has to be done let's move on to task number three so task number three is like this inform that he or she can resume to work after two to three weeks of surgery with limited hand movements at least six months to return to full activity Advice not to continue skating for some time until doctor's order, okay? So here, let's break it down into two different segments, okay? The first segment is this one. Inform that he or she can resume to work after two to three weeks of surgery with limited hand movements, at least six months to return to full activity. So I'm going to explain that here, okay? So my explanation is, it is understandable that you're concerned about the recovery period following surgery. Although it is a major surgery, you can resume to work after two to three weeks of surgery with limited hand movements. Hmm? Please note that you may need to take proper rest for at least six months before you start doing full activities. Okay, so these are the two statements that you can use to explain task number three. Okay, and here also please note that I have started the explanation by using an acknowledgement statement that is, it is understandable that you are concerned about the recovery period following surgery. I didn't jump into the task explanation directly. Instead, I made sure that I'm acknowledging the patient's concern about the recovery and whether the patient will be able to start doing his work very soon. I addressed that concern. After that, I explained to the patient, yes, this will take some time, that is two to three weeks. And then I told him the importance of having limited hand movements. And I also mentioned to him about um, his six months of rest before he get into any full activities, okay? So that is how the first segment of task number three can be done. So task number three has another part two, okay? That is this one, advice not to continue skating for some time until doctor's order. So that is being explained here. I'm sorry to say that it's better to put a hold to skating until doctor's order. I hope you understand the significance of it, okay? So instead of always asking the patient, is it clear to you, is it clear for you, you can you know, use a statement like this too. I hope you understand the significance of it, which means we have been explaining a significant factor about taking rest. Why is it very important, okay? So you can check with the patient whether the patient understood the significance of it. Okay, so that's a, that's a very beautiful statement that you can use. So you can consider this. So that is how we can do task number three. And then, yes, you have to move on to task number four by asking another question. Is there anything else worrying you? Mm? So Mr. Mike is going to ask you the next question about the flexibility of the shoulder. And that is what you're going to explain in task number four. So task number four is like this. Tell the patient that regular exercises can restore the flexibility of the shoulder. The physiotherapist will assist him or her after the surgery. So this is the point that we are going to explain in task number four. Okay, again, we can divide this into two portions, okay? 
So the first portion is this one. Tell the patient that regular exercises can restore the flexibility of the shoulder. Okay, so see how I've explained it. You can see it here. I can understand that you are worried about your flexibility. I assure you that doing exercises regularly as instructed by the physiotherapist will definitely quicken your recovery and will help to restore the flexibility of your shoulder. So this is the basic explanation you can provide here, okay? So if you look at the task, it is clearly mentioned, tell that patient that the regular exercises can restore the flexibility of the shoulder. Hmm? This particular portion has been explained in an elaborated way here. Okay, you guys can see that. I told them regular exercises as instructed by the physiotherapist will definitely quicken your recovery and it will also help to restore the flexibility of the shoulder. Okay, so that is how we can explain that point. We have one more segment here saying that the third the physiotherapist will assist him or her after surgery. So that point can be explained like this. The physiotherapist will speak to you regarding the exercise regime after your surgery. Okay. And then we're checking with the patient, is that okay with you? Hmm? So that is how you can finish that particular task. So I hope it is clear for you guys. Moving on to the next one, the next part is task number five. Task number five is like this. Advise the patient about aftercare. Do not uh, remove the sling or immobilizer early. Don't skip physiotherapy. Avoid pushing, lifting, and straining the surgical hand. Especially avoid driving. Hmm? So let's break it down again the first segment avoid the patient about aftercare don't remove the sling or immobilizer early don't skip the physiotherapy avoid pushing lifting and straining the surgical hand especially avoid driving so this is the statement that you can use to explain this task before i leave i would like to discuss a few things with you regarding your aftercare please don't remove the sling or immobilizer early it acts as a support for you most importantly, try not to skip your physiotherapy sessions as it's one of the effective ways to quicken your recovery and restore your flexibility. Is that clear, Mr. Mike? Then, after getting a response from Mr. Mike, you can do the next part. Taking rest is very important. Speaking of which, don't push or lift or strain the surgical hand, especially avoid driving for some time so that you won't strain your surgical hand. And then you're asking Mr. Mike one more question. That being said, do you have any other concerns? Because once we finish all the tasks, it is important that we check with the patient whether the patient has any further questions that needs to be addressed. That is very important, okay? And after you have done that, Mr. Mike is going to say, no, I don't have any further concerns. So you're going to continue with the purpose of your visit because you're visiting, in this particular case note, you're visiting the patient in, this, in the ward to prepare the patient for the surgery. So you have to continue with that. So you're telling Mr. Mike, well, in that case, shall I prepare for your surgery? So Mr. Mike is saying, yes, you can. So you're saying, thank you. And that's the end of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So that is how you can wind up this entire cue card here. So if you have noted this particular area, you can see how I elaborated these points. Don't remove the sling or immobilizer early. Don't skip physiotherapy. Avoid pushing, lifting, and straining the surgical hand, especially avoid driving. So whenever you explain the bullet points, just keep in mind that you're not just picking it up from the brackets. Instead, you're connecting it with some elaborations here and there. So I'll take you through the statements once again so that you can clear let's see that so here uh, I have told mr. Mike please don't remove the sling or immobilizer early then I've added one point it acts as a support for you okay so that is the reason why I'm telling mr. Mike not to remove it early then moving on to the next explanation I'm telling him most importantly try not to skip your physiotherapy sessions why as it's one of the effective ways to quicken your recovery and restore your flexibility Okay, see, I'm not just telling Mr. Mike, don't skip physiotherapy. I'm giving an explanation about why he shouldn't or why he must be careful about not skipping the physiotherapy. Okay, and if you look into the next part, I told him like this, taking rest is very important. Speaking of which, okay, speaking of which is a really good usage that you can use. Okay, because here you're talking about rest. Okay, taking rest is very important. So speaking of which, don't push or lift or strain the surgical hand, especially about driving. For what? 
for some time so that you won't strain your surgical hand. That is the reason why we are telling Mr. Mike not to do anything like that. So whenever you are explaining the points given in the bullet, you know, the, as the bullets given in the brackets, make sure that you elaborate it with some extra explanations as in why or as to why you are giving that suggestion. That will be a little more better when you come, you know, when it comes to the explanatory part because your explanations will look a little you know, elaborated. So that is going to give you more explanations uh, for your role play too. Okay, so that is how you can do this. And I hope it is clear for you guys. All right, guys, so by that we have seen how easily you can create statements as well as to break down each task and create statements in a very simplified manner. So I hope it was very helpful for you guys. If yes, let us know because all your suggestions are really valid for us. And if you find it really informative and helpful, make sure that you share it with your friends as well so that I'll see you guys next time with another video and the explanation of that too. So until then, take care. Bye-bye. IILT, it's my cup of tea.